Hi, I'm Amy from the Northern Ireland Science Festival. Welcome to our digital programme. This is our three-part series on the past, present and future of the linen industry in Northern Ireland. If you like what you see, remember to hit that subscribe button. Irish linen was a huge industry uh, right across the island of Ireland. It was famous all over the world. It was regarded as an extremely high quality product. And it's not just the, I mean, the, the machinery for making flax and linen was exported from, from here all over the world as well as linen itself. Uh, so, you know, it was one of the biggest employers uh, in the country, a huge industry. We do thankfully still have some weavers and we have uh, one beetler uh, still going, which is amazing, but a lot of the other stages in that supply chain have gone. Um, so it's a, it's a huge undertaking uh, to try and bring that back, but it's, it's something we just think uh, would, be, would be so nice to see flax growing in fields again here. Mallon Linen really started with Mallon Foundry. Um, we make bronze sculptures and have been doing that for quite a few years. And we went looking for some Irish linen to, to package the bronze sculptures in. And that just got us really interested in Irish linen. We started asking lots of questions about where it came from. And we realised that nobody was really growing flax for linen in Ireland anymore. Um, and we just thought that was a bit strange and a bit uh, sad and we, we wondered if um, it was something we could have a go at. My husband Charlie has this farm uh, in Tyrone and we knew that flax had been grown on the farm before and there was this great story in the family that uh, Charlie's grandfather had bought a second farm of land and had grown flax on the farm and that, that the flax was so profitable that it had paid for the second farm of land in the first year. Uh, so we knew it had been grown here successfully and we just quite naively, I think, thought let's give it a go and see what happens. So we planted our first acre of flax. We did everything wrong. We planted the wrong variety. Um, we planted it the, you know, at the wrong seeding rate and, and did lots of things wrong, but we learned loads. Um, and we uh, harvested that and so that was the start of it and we've we've been growing every year since then so we're in our we've harvested our third year this will be our fourth and every year we're getting a little bit better at it now so the first step for us is we prepare the soil in the field and um, we have a crop rotation so we plant potatoes the year before and that gives us a nice uh, loose soil to plant the, the flax. So we sow the flax uh, using a, an old fiddle. It's by far the best. We've tried lots of different methods and, and the old um, traditional way is actually by far the best. Um, so it, it only takes about half a day to um, prepare and, and plant an acre of flax. So it gets sown with the fiddle and um, that gives it a nice distribution. You want it planted just the right amount together uh, to get it to grow good and tall and traditionally they said it would take a hundred days to grow and we have always found that to be the case as well and you know it's ready when the stems are nice and golden colour about two-thirds of the way up and um, it has this beautiful blue flower and the blue flower uh, comes in the morning and 12 hours later it disappears and then they keep coming more and more flowers over a two or three week period. So it's an absolutely beautiful crop. Bees love it, birds love it. Um, so it uh, takes about 100 days. When we know it's ready, we go in and harvest it. The harvest is our sort of highlight of the year, I guess, for us. And, you know, once we know it's ready, and that's always a big decision, is deciding what day we're going to go in. And we're looking at the weather every day. Once we get the day, we call all the friends and family in. Everybody comes along to help us. Um, it has to be pulled rather than cut. And that's about preserving the quality of the fibre. And we're really lucky that we have um, some of Charlie's uncles who remember pulling flax and they're in their um, late 80s now, but they have come up and helped 
to pull flax on the farm and that, that's just really nice to get that knowledge passed down and they always criticise our technique and how we're doing it <laughs> and show us how to do it better. Um, it's lovely to get that kind of support from them. Once you have it harvested, we get it dried and the next stage is retting. Uh, that used to be done in flax dams, but now we do it in a, a stainless steel tank. So it gets retted and that's about breaking up the, the outer core uh, and releasing the fibre from the plant. Once it's been retted, which can take a couple of weeks, we take it out of the tank, we dry it and the next stage is to break it uh, so that you break up the, the, the stems. Then it gets scutched, which means taking off all the other bits of the plant to leave just the nice fibre exposed. Then it gets heckled, which is about putting it through various stages of combs to get it all nice and smooth and straight. Uh, then it gets spun, uh, which can be by hand or by machine. Uh, once it's spun, you've got yarn that you can weave. And then once it's woven, it might go through other stages to, to bleach it potentially, which was about putting it out in the sun, uh, laying it out in fields. And then it can be beetled. Uh, which is about giving it that beautiful sheen at the end. So that's the whole process. So we started off by um, going and talking to potential customers about, you know, just to see if there was market potential for a product like this before we um, got too far down the route. Uh, it's always good to do a bit of research at an early stage. And what was really interesting to us uh, was that actually sure people were interested in, in buying Irish linen again or Irish grown linen um, but actually what was far more interesting to, to people was the fact that it could be grown in a way that is really really sustainable. It's a fantastic textile from that point of view and a lot of other textiles uh, can be really damaging for the environment in their production whereas um, linen can be produced in a really sustainably, sustainable way. We're really focused on making sure that it's grown and processed in a way that's really sustainable. And in the past, one of the real issues with the process was around the retting stage. Uh, because when it rots down, the, the water that's left behind could be really damaging. Uh, if it's led away into rivers and that's what used to happen. There were flax dams on farms all over the country and the flax would get put into the flax dam, weighted down with stones, it would rot down over a period of uh, two or three weeks and the problem was that all of that water with all of that uh, material in it, when that was all released into the river in one go, uh, it would be really damaging for, for the um, the fish in the river and actually uh, if you look at the the water quality in the rivers in this catchment for example the decline in water quality in the river is directly correlated with the rise of the linen industry there's a clear correlation in those two things uh, so it was really important for us that we look at how we can do that differently and it's actually really possible to do it on farms nowadays because a lot of the equipment that we have nowadays we can use to, to treat that water. So what we're doing, we worked with the local Rivers Trust uh, to make sure we were doing this right. We got um, big cheese vats which we've upcycled basically into retting tanks. So all of the flax goes into the, the cheese vat. Uh, it, is filled up with rainwater, harvested rainwater, so we're not using any mains water in the process. But, um, we leave it in there for a couple of weeks until it's retted, and then we're able to draw that out with the slurry tanker, spread it over the field. It makes a really good uh, liquid fertilizer, so we're actually putting all of that plant matter back into the soil, uh, and that helps the crops for future years. Um, so the, the scutching can be a, a really long and laborious process if you're doing it by hand um, and there were various machines over the years that would have been used for scutching. So the first version is um, just a hand version uh, where you were doing it with a sort of paddle and that would take an awful long time to do any quantity of flax. Um, subsequent to that there were water driven uh, scutching turbines 
And they were um, obviously much quicker and much more effective, but it was actually really dangerous as well because people were um, having to come in contact with these very fast moving uh, turbine blades. Uh, and there's lots of stories about terrible injuries from the scutching mills uh, that were water driven. The next stage up is the sort of 1940s Mackey's scutching turbine. Uh, there were various models of scutching turbines uh, released around the, the 1940s and they are you know, very, very efficient and we are expecting that we should be able to process maybe about, you know, certainly an acre, our acre that we grow every year, we should be able to put that through in, you know, a day easily. So that will massively speed up our process. When we uh, first planted our first field of flax, um, we kind of naively thought that all the rest of the processes that we'd need would be being done somewhere. But when we went looking for, you know, who's going to scotch or uh, who's going to even spin, um, we suddenly realised that actually a lot of the processes or a lot of those processes are missing. Um, so we were, uh, you know, really stuck then because we think, are we going to have to do this by hand or are we going to have to ship it away somewhere else to be processed? And that just wouldn't have been viable and it certainly wouldn't have been as sustainable as we wanted it to be. By sheer luck and a series of coincidences, found out that um, somebody local had got an old 1940s uh, scutching turbine that had been active in a mill in a village nearby up until the 1970s and it had been stored in a barn and uh, was under a you know in all sorts of small bits under a big pile of other stuff and we went to see it and it just you know Luckily, uh, my husband Charlie is an engineer and a blacksmith and a caster and was not perturbed by this big pile of uh, bits of machinery. And, you know, he could look at it and see that actually it could work. Um, and we have had great fun putting together this massive jigsaw of pieces of um, machinery. And uh, whoever had taken it apart had helpfully numbered lots of parts of it. So we were able to, uh, that gave us a bit of a guide. And what we've been really, you know, so encouraged by was um, when we started to tell people what we were doing and when people saw the flax growing in the field, so many people have come up the lane and said, I used to work with machines like this, or I used to grow flax, or I used to, or here's a machine, we've got a machine, and people keep giving us machines and parts and all of the stuff that we need. So that's been really encouraging, all of that support, because so many people remember it, and remember it being grown here, and we're part of the industry. So it's really nice time to be doing this because that knowledge is still out there. So the, the, the scutcher has gradually gone together bit by bit, and we're at a point now where um, all the pieces are there. It's all moving, it's all freed up. Um, the motors are coming next week and we'll go on and that, that should get it um, up and running again. When we started this, I don't think we had any clue about the sort of crazy journey we'd end up on and the, the number of people who would get involved um, and, and where it could potentially go. Uh, and we've just learned so much. But there's all kinds of other aspects to this as well. Natural fibres are being used in all kinds of other ways now. Um, we're replacing a lot of plastics with natural fibre composites. Uh, flax is being used in cars, it's being used to make musical instruments, it's being used to create wall panels and all kinds of different things. So natural fibres, both hemp and flax, are, are really, you know, are such an important material for the future. And if we, when we restore the scutching machine, we really hope that lots of other farms might consider growing flax as well and that we'll be able to process it for them. So, you know, there'll be that part of the supply chain back in Northern Ireland, and we can work with other farms, and hopefully someday with spinning mills and spinners to, to make that whole process work again. <laughs>